All right, welcome to another episode of the Fair Chase Podcast. Uh, we took a hiatus for one week to mm-hmm. do our special episode with the boys. Um, so if you haven't listened to it yet, go check that out. Um, the Deer Hunter Podcast and Bow Hunter Chronicles will be releasing the next two episodes on their channel. So we had a fun time doing it. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. It, it was uh, deathly to get up there. The drive up <laughs> took forever, but we did it. We did. It was kind of sketchy on the way back. We'd hit a po- pocket of snow, and then it'd be sunny out. We hit another pocket where you can barely see over the hood of your truck. Remember following that semi? Holy cow! It was like, could hopefully see, he doesn't crash. All, all you, all we could follow on the road were just two tracks of semis, yep. just swerving. It's like, oh, he's going around something. And sure enough, a car would be going slow yeah. in the other lane. It's like, holy cow! That night, right by my house, there was an eighty car pileup. Right on the highway for that, because all of a sudden, if something stops or crashes in front of you, you can't see until it's like right there, and it's mm-hmm. like that. So, yep, a lot of fun. Uh, got to meet a lot of cool people, and uh, you know, it was kind of a bummer when we did all that driving. We got to the cars, and you dropped me off at my car, and I left my phone in your car. <laughs> I, went I was all like, the son of because I realized that as you were, I saw you getting on the highway. I'm like, there's no way to stop them. You're no. too far gone. And I didn't notice until five minutes down the road. I'm like, well, what if I turn around? Nope. Is he still going to be there? Nope. I figured it was I'll not, just, You did the right thing. Yeah. Just go to where you, you expect me to go. I didn't get that phone till the, like for at least 24 hours. Being 24 was hours nice? without a phone was sweet. Yeah, it was good. Just disconnect it was very, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it was very, um, well, it's just by the end of it, it's like, oh, now I have to worry about deal with the phone again when I got it back. Yeah. People calling you and texting you. <laughs> well, good thing I... I texted your wife and it's yeah. like, hey. And, if, and I was like, it was nice about phone. it. If it's a really important message, people just ask Laura. Right. So she's like secretary. Yeah. It's not. It's a nice nice perk to have with that. But I would have, it would have been nice not to have a phone, but at the same time, sketchy weather, not having your phone. I know. I was like, if I'm in the ditch somewhere, I'm just, just going to just call it. Just call it. I'm, <laughs> Roll I'm, over. A good run. <laughs> Roll over. Um. So we're outside today uh, in a neutral, uh, secure location, undisclosed. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's if you can, if you're watching this, you can see the sunset behind us. There's open fields uh, where I'm assuming there's probably turkeys. I mean that if that over there doesn't look like a turkey habitat, kind of down you know, with those Ooh. that that's Turkey City. A little I bet. bottom field corner, some ridges, probably a creek flowing back there. Yeah, that'd be sick. That's dynamite. So we're very excited. Um, for that, I mean, obviously we're excited. First, we got a bear hunt. We do have a bear hunt. Our Alaskan coastal black bear coming up in two weeks. We'll be there. Actually, less than two. Less than two. Wow, that's gonna be twelve days. Freaking sweet. We're gonna be living on a boat the entire time. We're gonna be catching halibut and rockfish during the day, and then scooting out on a skiff into like these uh, glacier runoffs, as they are, or the openings where these rivers come, and by the gla- grass flats where these yes. bears are eating. Eating blue mussels too. Blue mussels. I, I think they'll. If they, I don't know if it'll be, they'll be out. But um, what's cool about it that we've never done before is we're bringing, actually, kind of like a new quasi member of the team mm. a little bit, um, a guy named Jordan who, uh, who's going to be filming it. And like Jordan's legit. He's good. He's he does. Legit. He does good work. So um, I am extremely excited for that. Um, just to share the story of it. Like we always mm-hmm. talk about it, but it, it, we've always looked forward to taking people along with us in a way that we don't do with, on our uh, a phone. Because sometimes on our yeah. phone we'll do It's kind of fun, and people seem to really like it, but it's like we could be a little bit artistic with it. Yeah. Well, Jor- Jordan can be art- yeah. artistic with it. I've been thinking through this. Like, it's just it's going to be fun. So we're filming that, so that will come out. And, well, and it's, I, don't, I think it's a surprise. We can't say who we're working with yet mm-hmm. on some of this, but it will be, uh, it'll be a big deal. Anyways, keep your, keep your eyes peeled. Um, but today, this is episode two of Turkey. Yes. So I'm going to turn it over to you, your turkey guy. So what we covered in the first episode on our trip up north, uh, we talked about basically understanding the basics of a turkey, what they do during the day, eat, sleep, breed, go to bed. Decent day. And if you're able to just kind of hone in on those aspects, you can start to start start to start <laughs> pinpointing areas that you want to look at. So like if you were on public land and you didn't, have anywhere to go where to even start so that's what we covered in episode one just kind of briefly um but we wanted to dive in a little bit deeper onto calling strategies just because that's a huge component of turkey hunting and it's something that you need to be well not necessarily well versed in but i think you should have a good understanding of what the different calls mean 
yeah. in how these turkeys are communicating back to you. So, did you bring a turkey call? To I do didn't. This? No. I'm glad. That's just you can talk about it. Okay. He's a good caller. I I have got a, a few basic moves, you know, yeah. that work. Yep. But like you, you have more time spent into the ins and outs. Of that, I mean, if you if you go to a hunting things. store or a hunting expo and you go to the turkey calling section, everyone always picks up a call and they'll do a yelp right away. Walk, 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 walk. Yeah. You know, if they grab the box, they're just grinding on it or just chipping away at that slate call. No, no one's really sharing diaphragm calls. Hopefully at the place, but yeah. Um, that I would say that is that and the cluck are the two basic calls. Those are my two. You should keys. learn how to do. And I purr though. I can purr. I purr a lot. Can you purr? When they get close, I like to purr. I I stop calling and I'll just like get let out a purr every once in a while. Do you know what a purr is? It means oh, I'm just like chill. Yeah, you're like, chill. Just, I'm just right? kind of doing my day. So if you're purring, you know you're giving that little. You're just barely scraping the tip of that. If you're using a sl- slate call, you know you're just barely <laughs> dragging it across, making that. Purr, purr. That is a hen. In her, in her zone, like she's just feeding, she's having a good time, she's relaxed. I think of it like a chicken, you know, and like chickens. If you hear them, like they're just pecking around. Yeah, there. yeah exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so that's what a happy hen's gonna do. Yeah, she's gonna cluck and she's gonna purr, and she's just gonna be content. So that's definitely one, and it's it's always very soft. Like turkeys can hear very very well. So e- even just the smallest little purr on there. Like especially when they're getting in close, it's just signifying, "Hey, I'm just a happy hen, just chilling, just chilling with out, this. right?" Um, I I find it interesting about uh, e- quiet, Laney. Uh, I find it interesting about uh, how well they can hear and locate. Yes, like they can hear you and know exactly where you are better than the vice versa. Right. So, like to go off what you're saying, if you've got a tom roosted up in a tree, you know you're set up somewhere close. And you can hear him gobbling, and you let out, you know, just a soft little yelp or something, and a different turkey hears you, like, way away. Yeah. That tom knows almost exactly where you are. Pinpoint. Exactly. Very, pinpoints right where you are. I don't know how they do it, but they're incredibly good at it. But that I'll say one thing, not to jump ahead. Keep that point in mind, because sometimes what happens is you overcall thinking they're not going to know where you are. I've had done that in the past. Like, oh, there's no way, so i got to keep calling him so he locates me but i found that if i call he find he responds and you know i'll, I'll like hold off for a little bit mm. and like just now knowing that he knows exactly where i am right it just it knowing that changes the way you should be calling well even to go on that too if you don't get that gobbler that's in the tree near to you and you give it a little bit more time if that tom is either is either the other uh, farther away tom yeah if he's hand up and he's following away hens and then he's going back to you know his strut zone or whatever He's gonna remember. Oh yeah, there was there was a hen over there. Yeah, and he's gonna go and visit that spot if yep. he's if he's into it. So it's having turkeys respond to you is exhilarating. Yeah, like when you it's finally get a gobble to to slam off, that is, <sighs> it's like okay, it's go time. But you got to be smart in those circumstances. Um, so we talked about um, purrs, very basic yelps are believe it or not a locator. They're saying, here. "Hey, I'm over here, Marco po- Come, Polo." Yep, and that's when that got like when you're just letting off a couple, like a run of you know, yeah, five to eight yelps. Usually, you'll get a tom to to respond back. Just, I feel like they are very, very likely to respond if they hear. Yeah, it, you know, it's just saying, "Hey, I'm a hen. I'm over here," and Tom's gonna say, "Hey, I'm a tur- I'm a hen, or I'm a I'm a tom. I'm over here." Yeah, just letting you know. Um, so I mean, those are the the two. I would say the, the three, I guess, the purr, the cluck, and the yelp. Those are my. Those the are all I basics. do. I'll get out. I'll call them, and we'll go back and forth a little bit. Then I'll wait. My my favorite part. Of, my favorite call is silence. Ooh, that you hard stay, game. Store that away <laughs> for a rainy day. <laughs> that is uh that is a great point that we'll bring up at the end. Um, but another critical call you need to be doing is the cut. Mm-hmm. Just mm, bop, I do bop, a bop, cut bop, too, actually. Bop, 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 exactly. Bop, bop. If you can combine that with yelps, those it, are harder to do in the diaphragm. They are. In di- the diaphragm is something that you need to practice. It's the best. It's better than practice. all the other. I love the box is fine, really loud. The slate is great, actually. But like the diaphragm is. I, I feel like if you know, <laughs> this is gonna sound very weird, but if you know how, if you know. Your way around a diaphragm call in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <Yikes>. <laughs> you can make so many different calls and 
I'm not going to say dialects, but you can put different twists on the call. So like you can be yup, 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 pack, 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 pack. Yeah, I love it. You know what? I'll sit with you sometimes. I, I love when you do that. <laughs> and you just get cutting, and it just, if you can't get a Tom to, to call to you over some yelps, add in a few big cuts like that. What does cut mean? A cut? Mm hmm. What do you mean? Like, what does the cut noise mean? Like, what do you. Tra- what that do you is mean? Me- that means that hen's getting excited. Oh! <laughs> yeah, if you want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's just meaning like, oh yeah, like she's getting fired up. Oh, yeah, ex- she's she's hot to trot. Yeah, as a hen, and she's getting fired up that that time's calling back, and it's just a good. I feel like if some birds get call shy, mm-hmm. it's because they've heard hunters just sit there and yelp, yeah, yelp, 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 yelp. But if you can in a, add in some yelp, yelp, cut, 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 yelp, yelp, yelp just yeah. like combine the two, you're you're gonna sound different and more realistic. Yeah, in my opinion. But what about a kiki re? Yeah, the kiki is just kind of like a. It's another locator, but it's for like younglings. Yeah, you know, it's usually in the like summertime when they're trying trying to corral all the chicks and. I don't know how to do it, so I'm not worried. It's about tough, that. man. It's real tough. I haven't perfected it yet, no. but it, I mean, you can do it. But if you can stick to those those four, those are go t- your go to. Yep. Be fine. So, I want to talk about a little scenario. And right. we'll, we'll get your opinion on it. Um, you are, it's in the morning. Okay. You've got a gobbler in the tree. Okay. And he's been gobbling his head off in the tree and he flies down. Am I set up? And You're set up. Yep. Maybe you got a couple <clears throat> decoys out. Okay. What decoys? Uh, we'll say uh, a half strut Jake That's and a lone hand. All right. Uh, fair. Yeah. That's my go-to. Um, and he shuts up. Yep. Doesn't say anything for the rest of the morning. What do I do? What do you do? Like for the rest of the morning, does that mean I go the whole morning and I don't see him? I would say you. Or he just shuts up and I don't know what he's going to do. Um, I will, if I'm going back and forth, call, ah, yep. call like a little bit later. Ah, is he moving? Can I hear him moving? Sure. Where is, is he going towards We'll me? say he's hand up. He's hand up. Yep. Are you going to continue to sit in that area? No. No. I don't. I don't know. I don't call well enough to be able to sit there and think, uh, you know what, I'm just going to coax this bird away. So I'll do one of two things. And I get pretty aggressive, I feel, in turkey season because where we are, not a ton of pressure. Our seasons are short. So it's like, I don't care, man. I'm going balls to the wall on this thing. And so either I'll try to, like, if I if I know he's with hens and I can see it or something, mm. I'm a, and I can use some topography. A lot of times where I like to hunt and where we like to hunt for turkeys is a little hilly, actually, yeah. in the woods. I can use a hill, try to actually block him off, and call again in a new location to make it sound like I'm kind of coming around and maybe he'll come to me sure. that way. That's one thing. Second thing, if that, like, is not doable, I'll just cut my losses and go find another turkey. Yep, that's exactly right because – did I pass? Is that what you'd do? I'm just saying there's many people over call. Yeah. And that is the biggest fault that most turkey hunters fall under is over calling. They figure if they just keep, keep hammering on their call, that turkey has to respond. But mo- I've seen it plenty of times that these times come in quiet and they're right on top. Or if you make a move, try to go closer. I hate when they come in quiet. Yep. I love when they call the whole way and then they get Everybody close does. and you can hear them drumming. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And it's a lot of fun. I mean, if if they're in quiet, you don't know what to expect. You can't hear them, and then you're yeah. calling, and it's just you're not playing the calling game. Mm-hmm. You want to, you honestly want to play hard to get. Sometimes I feel like the longest minutes out in the field hunting anything are where you hear for a turkey, and like then nothing happens for a while, and it's like, are they coming towards me or away? Am I wasting my time? I feel like I get more anxious about moving in those moments than like. Like, I can sit and wait for deer all day or, like, glass all day for bears or whatever. <clears throat> but it's, like, once I'm not, like, sure if the turkey's moving towards me. And I'm, like, all right. Like, you got to get antsy. I got to go. <laughs> you got to get the itch. Yeah. No, that's smart. I mean, different different turkey behavior warrants different strategies. I mean, there's some turkeys that will come right to you on a string. And yeah. you can, you can <clears throat> probably sit and hammer on your call the whole time and they're going to come right to you. But... Like you were getting at earlier, there's other turkeys that will, they'll get to their strutting zone and they'll almost play like a push pull, mm-hmm. right? So if you g- come in closer and then call, he's gonna back up, 
Yeah. And then if you back up and call, we he's did that come with that closer. one turkey two years ago. Uh, we were like laying on the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, like because he would come close, and that we just could not get him to close that gap, and we called it on that that bird. Those are hard turkeys to hunt, man. It was just like eventually he kind of moved away, and it's like, all right, we have what? And we we talked about this in the first episode, but like because we're so like mobile or like aggressive i don't know like we're willing to move around it's like all right that one's out next we'll go find another mm-hmm. bird and it's like all right that one's out we'll keep moving here and like oh and it's like you're just ho- a great problem to have you're leaving turkeys to go hunt other turkeys oh, dude. <laughs> it's like why it's are you so, leaving it's so fun well all that does is in my opinion you can always go back the next day for that turkey and try to hit him a different way one and two it's like we have a short usually a short turkey season although this year we'll have longer mm-hmm. um but usually we have a short turkey season so it's like like I better get as much hunting in in the day as I possibly can. Yeah. And so call if he's being a turd and just goes the other way. Just <laughs> like all right, well, you know. So no, I guess another scenario I'll ask you, and we do this a lot, but if you're, um, we'll say it's past your morning hunt, you couldn't get that gobbler to, to yeah. hit back. You're not leaving your setup. Yeah. And you're gonna go run and gun. Oh yeah, I love that. It's a good. Yeah. I love the run and gun. What is your strategy for calling on that and why? What I've liked to do, I'll take maybe a hen with me. Sometimes, usually I'll take it with me and a lot of times I won't end up using it. <clears throat> but we'll walk and call and just locate. Sometimes You know what we should be getting? A crow call. We should be trying to, to shot gobble something. Shot gobble, I, yeah. Crow calls, we'll We haven't do that. done much of that. Like I would love to do, but anyways, we'll walk, try to get him to sound off, maybe by yelping. When we got it, we played that. We a lot of times we'll look at our map sure. and be like, "All right, where is he right now? Where are we? Like, where makes the most sense for him to move?" And then let's make it easy for him to come to us. What type of call are you doing? Yelp locator. Just a yelp. Yeah. Yelp. Yeah, and then like if he com- if he starts to play ball, then it's like I'll start to do different things. You know, yeah. different things. Okay. Well, is that what you what you do? No, that's ex- I mean, obviously we hunt the same way. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly we do. what you, I just want to say. Kind of learn the it. same way, yeah. <laughs> well, and a lot of things that I've learned, I learned from you, or the hard way. And usually the hard way, we are together on it, right? You know, <laughs> or it's but, just Jared go call. Yeah, it's like usually I'm like Jared. All right, I'm gonna go up here. You go behind me and call for a while. Yeah, no, it's um basically you're just walking every hundred, two hundred yards, letting off a soft yelp. If you get one, if you get one to call back, he's usually pretty close. Yeah, if you hear him far away, you can make a play at him. Yeah. And then sometimes they're not going to respond back with a yelp. And that's when you – sometimes if you can get a quick cut, 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 bop, 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 they hammer back and then it – like you just – Then the game's afoot. Yeah. You just got – like I said, you just got to know what the calls are for when you're trying to talk like a turkey, you know? Yeah. If they're not getting a response from, hey, I'm over here, hey. then just be like, hey, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really over here. Just get – Get them fired up. Like, there's different ways of communicating with turkeys. You just got to know how to do it and which call to do it with. I love it. So. Could not agree more. I mean, that other than don't overcall. Yeah. And know your calls. Yeah. You're going to be a lot more successful this year and just get in, just start practicing now because you don't want to get out there and start practicing when you're in the field. And you're going out with a shotgun? Yeah, I'm going shotty this year. That's exciting. You're yeah. I, well. liked it. I liked it a lot better. Um, just because you can, like... <sighs> yeah, it was it was a quick, quick, clean kill. Um, less equipment to bring along. I love hunting a turkey with bow. Don't it get me fun. wrong; that was yeah. a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, but I decided to get a shotgun last year, and it's it really it's paid off. <laughs> 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 you love to see it. It's pretty sweet. So I'll probably maybe I'll try. I've not done the shotgun thing. I like to. Sh- I do like the bow. Uh, one reason I prefer it is less bird shot. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, if you it's hit not the head, that big of a deal, really. Head, you're not gonna what I want to do this year, um, when I tried to do yesterday, is take that skeleton, boil mm. it down, and then take the bones. And Laura, my wife, is going to rebuild it. it. I got cool. her, a, I got her a book, like a how-to book. Found it online. Some guy named the Bone Man. <laughs> 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 <And> wrote it. <laughs> Yuck. Uh, so it's like it's like uh, pl- like um, cone bind. Do you know what cone binding is? No. It's like uh, spi- like up uh, the plastic spiral bound on like. You can, oh yeah. You know. Anyways, um, and it was, I got it, he's in Alaska, I think he's in Alaska. He does, like, a how-to on how to put together whale bones, like whale skeletons and shit. Like, it's cool stuff. It's cool. Huh. Um, but anyways, my worry with the shotgun is that I'll just explode his head, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do that. I'm gonna, my, we've tried the, the boiling down a couple times on birds and stuff, and it just 
it just doesn't work great. Yeah. I'm getting the Beatles if I shoot one, I think. <sighs> That'd be sweet. I think I'm going to clean them. Just get them, and my, my hope is to get the Beatles this spring and have them all summer and, like, start collecting some roadkill, like, cool roadkill. Yeah, man. You know, and like get, some like, skunk? anything that has a cool skull. I can have a cool bunch of cool skulls. I'm fine. With, I'm I'm not ashamed of picking up roads. Some flesh eating if beetles, cool, man. I've got some weird Jimmy's colony of fresh flesh eating <laughs> beetles. I've got some weird stuff. Like I've got a weasel in my freezer right now. I've got some birds that we found. We got like a bunch of stuff that. Is that fox? Uh, I still I have its tail. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He's gonna be sweet. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it was like one of those black and red foxes. It was pretty sweet. Um, anyways. So I'm going to try to shoot one, and I'm, I want to try to get the beetles and do the whole turkey, like, skeleton. Yeah. That would be bad. That's going to be cool, man. Bone. Well, I hope you get one with a bow. I hope you get one with a shotgun. Are you, uh, when are you going? Are we, right when you get back? Or are you just going that weekend oh. when you get back from Alaska? Well, I just got soccer for a few weeks, and then my Saturday's free up. I just got a Tide Wee pop-up blind. So oh, I, I take the I kids, kids in there. The Tide Wee has the 270-degree, kind of like a perforated screen. So you can see out, but you can't see in. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. For, are you bringing the kids? The uh, kids are coming so they can look all the way around. The, the, oh, that would be sweet. The windows just kind of like slide down. There's no Velcro. You taking the, it to Big Rapids? Uh, I, mean, I don't know. Okay. I'll probably take the kids out somewhere down in Allegan. Yeah. And That'll give you more chances to hunt. I, yeah. I feel like the thing is what we've ended up doing is we end up having very short seasons because it's like one day or two days and we're done. Mm-hmm. So to like – Go out with your kids, or I've got like my cu- a couple cousins want me to take them yep. me out. My brother in law wants me to take them. My dad wants to go oh, hunting. Oh, cool, cool. So I'm like, I'm like, any chance I can go turkey hunting more with somebody and yep. just be the caller? The caller is awesome. Mm-hmm. Great practice. I want, I want in the field practice. Yeah. Um, I got I've got one of my old uh, calls, but I think I need a new one this year. We should talk to Dale. I know. Actually, you know what I like the most though, the Woodhaven. I got a Woodhaven. I like one. Woodhavens. It was an orange, and it just I called well with that one. But some of those Rocky Mountain specialties were really good. Too. They're really. We good. should call Joe. I already have. Freaking, you have? Yeah. Did you get me? Can you get me one? We'll talk. All right. Yeah. We'll talk. Let's talk about that. No. Yeah, I, I know a guy on the inside. It's gonna be good. Turkey season's gonna be very exciting. It's coming up. Get out there. Start learning your calls. And we can't wait to hear how everyone else does this season on some of this stuff. So we're actually gonna wrap this up. It's gonna be short and sweet. There's not a whole lot to talk about calling unless you're a master caller. and then Which we're not. I am not. We just know what works for us. Mm-hmm. And that was real basic. So hopefully you gleaned something off of that. Mm, gleaned, um, yeah, indeed. If you have any questions, shout out a question on. Just write us a message. Or yeah. just where you can get a hold of us in many different ways. We check them all. Yep, Facebook, um, Instagram. Even email, yeah. oddly enough. Yeah, pop us an email. We'll be happy to answer it. So if you have any questions, reach out. Otherwise, stay tuned for next week.